welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to a potential signing discussion where, in this segment, we're going to ask, should we sign Alan from Napoli? We're going to run through the potential pros and cons of any possible deal that we might strike for Alan, and by we, I mean Rob Astor and Terry McAllister and myself. We'll start with you on this one, Terry. What do you think Alan will add to our squad? It's a strange one, really, Alan, because when you look at you know what we want in the centre of midfield, like the first choice target was Hoiberg. And then, was, it, was, was he really though? Yeah, it was. It, it, it was, wasn't it? It was like it was widely known that they were after Hoiberg. Like it was reported in like you know, the, the best sources that you know you can have, like you know uh, Paul Joyce, you know the Athletic lads and and what have you. And but Alan is not the same type of player as Hoiberg. So Hoiberg is more like. To put it simply, he's more like a Schneiderlin who will sit in like that six role and provide that structure. Whereas Allen is all over the pitch. Allen's um, Allen's like a gunner, isn't he? Yeah, he's 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 that sort of mole where he's going to be, you know, flying everywhere, breaking up play, you know, sort of. I don't want to say box to box because that's an overused expression, but like you know, a combative. No, he, he's he's more of a gunner mold, I think, isn't he? He's, he's, yeah, he's just a yeah. tackler of it. And and to be honest, given what we got out of Ghana. I wouldn't complain about that, especially when you compare it to the dross we've got in the middle of the park right now. Yeah, he, he, he you know, on the face of it, he'd be a massive step up in quality on, on what we've got in the middle at the minute. Um, he, you know, he'd be put in alongside Andre Gomez, you would assume, and just have Andre Gomez sort of collect the ball off the back four like he was doing after the restart and let him let Alan sort of, you know, get about the pitch. Whereas I think if we'd have brought in like a Hoiberg, we'd just switch that round and we'd rather a holding player take the ball off the back four. The only... I, I think if Hoiberg came in, though, I don't think there would have been a place for Gomez. Possibly not, no. Um, it could have been Gabamon and, and Hoiberg. We don't obviously know what Gabamon's going to offer yet. But I, for me, I worry about the Allen deal because, yes, on paper, it's a massive quality you know, boost. But he's 29 and the, not the resale value as such that bothers me. It's just how many players leave Italy. I know he's not Italian, but how many players leave Italy when their best years were in Italy and go on to be great somewhere else at a late age? Like usually, like he's leaving Italy. He'd be leaving Italy at twenty nine. Will he be able to cope in a Premier League midfield battle in a two? There's no guarantee. I could be completely wrong. He could come in and go, oh yeah, he's he's quality. Like how did you ever doubt him? I do have my doubts though that it's that he'll adapt. Not that not his ability. Some players are brilliant in some leagues. You know, like look, look at Diego Forlan. You know what I mean? He came here, was terrible he was in this league. And he, he was brilliant in La Liga. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, I'm I can say we're going to get a bit of that because if that does happen, you won't be able to move him on again because of his age. Like the reason we could got we very quick, very quickly recycled Klasan. Vlasic and Luckman is because they were all young enough to other clubs to be attracted to them. If we bring in Alan and he's no and he's not good enough or he doesn't it doesn't adapt, another club's not going to give us twenty five plus million for him. So it's just about backing your manager. I think if Carlo Ancelotti um, turns around and says, "Listen, I know the risks, but he's exactly what I need to make this team better and what we ultimately want by hook or by crook is to make the team better." Then you've got to back them because we backed some absolute um, punters, and you know why? Why, why, yeah. not, why would, you've got to back the, the real, you know, an actual Don when you get one if you're going to back Marco Silva. Well, I think that's a, the important thing is that Alan has a brilliant relationship with Ancelotti as well, and I mean, I know we've we've brought in Richarlison because he had a brilliant relationship with Silva, and we've done this with players uh, when managers have had. We've always brought in players who were close to them from previous clubs, but. When it's Carlo Ancelotti, you can't argue with players who he rates. No, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's also got to be said as well, you know, if Ancelotti's coming in and the other plan is for him to be, you know, he's kind of got a four and a half year contract and you want him to be long term, he's got the best chance of all the managers we've appointed since Moyes, at least, of being a, the next long term Everton manager. Then, you know, one of his lieutenants straight in. You know, it might be what he needs. It might be the first sort of building block for the rest of the team. Like, not everyone has to be, you know, 
18 to 21. Like you are going to need some older players. It just has to be the right one. This effectively could be what Delph should have been. Like he could be that player who comes in and like stabilizes the centre of midfield and he's sort of like different formation and what have you, but comes in and he just has that calm head who sort of knits the rest of the team together and leads this group of young players. You know, yeah, even... I, can, I, can, I can just see it now. Alan's going to be there next to Richarlis and what, what and show him what's, what's Portuguese for there. Have some fucking respect. Yeah, exactly. Just like, is... Alan's got... just going to be the, the, the <laughs> Brazilian Fabian Del. That's what I mean. If you if you if you're bringing in if you, if you play if you're starting, you know, Holgate, Calvert Lewin, you know, Moise Keane, Richarlison, Wobi, sorry, but you know, all these young players, someone like um Allen, if he fits the bill and he may, and he, you know, he adapts, then he could be that one who that leader on the pitch and that's clearly what we've not got. We've not got a proper leader as an older bit. We need we need young players like Jesse Lingard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh God! Well, yeah, I think Al- Alan's definitely the the mould of player. I think he's probably got absolutely you know, as all the players go. He's probably the one of the more well equipped to suit the four four two because he's a he's a grafter. Well, he's done it. Ancelotti knows exactly where he plays in in, in his system because he's had them before. So it's just it's just the only question mark is about his adaptability, not about his quality, not about his mentality, anything like that. It's just whether he will go from Italy to England at 29. There's no guarantee, but I mean, let's hope so. We've 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 got so many older players in the past, and so few of them work out. You know, Rooney and and um, Delph and whatever. We've got to get one right eventually. Our signings have been literally, I think, since Gareth Barry, they've all been wretched. Well, if you look at our older players, none of them lead the the younger players like Sigurdsson and Schneidlin and Delph. They're all absolute frauds who went missing in games and, you know, cost us points. And, like, you know, look at look at Schneiderlin and Sigurdsson and that, you know, FA Cup derby. Look at, like, you know, frigging Coleman got himself sent off against Burnley, was it? And, Delph you know, telling people to have respect and lumping yeah. it into the stands to give Newcastle lifting two got goals him, and out of time. Got himself sent off at Watford needlessly. Like, the older players are the ones who, who don't show the leadership in this club at the minute. And if you could... Get rid of a lot of them, bring in Alan, and he is a proper leader. Then he could have a huge impact on Richarlison, Holgate, etc. Yeah, I think that that may well be what Carlo has in mind. Because if you, I think we've had this discussion about Carlo in the past, haven't we? He's always seen the value of a good captain, a proper leader. Yeah, you know, you know, you'll you'll go just people mentioned there about his age and things as well, and and. Don't be wrong. I know part of our plan is to bring in younger players and to you know to get a young team, but you do need that little bit of experience in your team. You'll be there forever. You know, you look when when City signed Fernandinho, he was he was no spring chicken, and he's arguably still one of their better better players. And he's adapted by dropping back into centre half at times now because he knows he hasn't got the legs to run in the midfield. You know, so hopefully he can have that kind of impact, or if. I'd love them to have the, a similar kind of impact that um, Fernandez has for United, just coming in and just settling the team down and making them a better team. And he, if he's going to do all the dirty work and all the, you know, the tackling and the chasing down, that leaves Andre Gomez then to go and be the player that we want him to be. So I'm all for signing him. I've got no, I understand the concerns with it, but. As a club, I don't think we're in a position at the moment to be, you know, to be worrying about things like that. You know, if, if, like you said, Terry, if Carlo Ancelotti wants him, you get him. You know, he's used him before. He's de- in this system. He's, de- he's played him in this system before as well. That's important. That he's not played him in a four-two-three-one. He's not played him in a four-three-three. He's played him in a four-four-two formation, which is what he said he's going to do with Everton. So go out and get them. Pay what pay what you need to pay what you need to pay. Yeah, I think that that's a very good point as well. That like you know because in this era where four four two is not on vogue, if you like, there's not many midfielders who are suited to it. So yeah. that does make the market difficult for us. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that. Especially in centre midfield, you might get wide players who can adapt to it, but centre midfield it asks a lot of you, doesn't it? Really does, yeah. And then you know, I think I think when you think when you're looking at if you bring someone in like Alan, you could arguably switch Gomez and Gabamon around then because they're 
potentially going to be similar kind of player. Or there's got there's you know I heard when Gabamon first first signed that he could play centre half. Does he turn into a centre half? You, you know you don't know how it's, how it's going to work, do you? You know, but th- there'll be a combative side to the midfield. Then if he comes yeah, in, yeah, I, that's, and I that's think what we've that's missed. what I think that's what Everton missed Steely, and I think we've missed it since David Moyes. Really, I think the squad lacks versatility. A lot of our players can't adapt to other roles if it's asked of them. Mm. Yeah, you look back to like. Alex Ferguson's teams even dare to say across the park they always seem to have players who are willing to like swap positions and you know just sort of mix things up a little bit. I don't I don't know if our players have that tactical versatility. So I don't know how you know that about Liverpool. They don't even get injuries, so why do they have to do it? <laughs> you know I mean they stick like Rihi goes on the wing and does bits. Like I think you are right there, though. I think as a club, as a club, that the team does lack versatility. You know, we've tried playing Gilfy Sigurdsson. I think in every position apart from in goal, but he's not. And cut it, them, he's, he's not cut them up he, to any of them. You know, Dave, uh, he, Davis. We were discussing Davis before, same. Yeah, you know, they can't. They can't. They wouldn't. I think. I think we need players who can do that. But before we do any of that, get the basic sight and get yourself a combative midfielder, which we've lost. We haven't had since kind of guy and we've massively, massively missed them. You know, it, it was cruel what happened to, you know, JP, JP Gabamon. And, you know, you hope he'd come in and, and, uh, and still have some sort of career with us, whether, you know, to what level that be remains to be seen, but get Alan in and get this midfield fighting again, mate. Cause if, if I know we've been like with Gabriel as well from uh, Gabriel Mangalas from, from Lille for, the best part of like ever now, and it, for me, we don't need a centre half. We need a midfielder who pr- protects that the group of centre half that we've got already. We've got a good centre half in Mason Allgate. We've got a decent centre half in in Yeri Mina. And Michael Keane started playing all right now um, in this four four in this four four two. And then you've got the emerging of Brantwaite as well. Which which so we don't need a centre half. Get a midfielder and who can protect that back four. And it, I think if we get Allen in, I think you'll see. Massive, massive improvements, and you'll see an improvement in Andre Gomez, and you'll see an improvement in the wingers as well because they'll be, be able to create chances more because they've I mean, got someone doing the doing the dirty work for them. I mean, we, we will need wingers as well as Alan, though. I think we we do need more service coming from the flanks. Yeah, wouldn't disagree. You know, I think we've got, I think we've probably got one for me, one out and out winger, and that's Phil Walcott. I think the rest of them, I think. I think Awobi is probably better off playing centrally, which we can't accommodate with a four four two. I think we've got Bernard, who uh, I hate to say, it, but flatters to deceive on that left hand side at times. Um, I think he's more suited to a central role, but again, we don't play that way. Um, so you are right. I do think we need some some proper out and out wingers. But I think yeah. the center, I think the center of the park is the is the main, you know, the main. We, the we main. need to improve the spine of the team. Yeah, get that sorted. Get that sorted, and the rest will just fit into place. Yeah. Um. So is Alan the answer? That we'll finish with that is Alan the answer. For me, it is. Yeah, he is. I I I'd, I'd pay what he wants. Not mine. Teddy. <laughs> he he could be. I hope so. I certainly wouldn't pay what he wants, but um, I wouldn't. I'd be happy to get him. How much would you just pay? It's pay what pay them what they want. That's the thing, you know. You know, I understand what you're saying that you you mentioned before about co- about the COVID price and things like that. But if we want to play, if we want to play it, and a club's got a valuation of them, you've got to meet that valuation. At the end of the day, you don't know. You can haggle in some respects, but if we're desperate the way we are, we can't we can't start the Premier League season in four weeks time or however long it is with that midfield because we'll just get an eye. They'll just walk through us like they have done. We need the players in. Let's not let's not ask about here. Let's not you know, let's not haggle over five million like we did for Sigurdsson for that for that best part of two months when, when we signed him. Just go out and sign and put put your money where your mouth is and go and get him. You know what I mean? Marcel Brands is there to do a job. I understand he's there to get value for money and you'll get value for money if you get the right player and get these players in. I think that's the thing, let's not forget. I mean, when we bought Richarlison for fifty million or whatever, we were the laughing stock of the whole League, everyone thought we'd yeah. we spunked a load of money on a really, like a really overrated player, and he's he's turned out to be our best player. I think no one laughs about that price tag now. No, you know, and, and like like I alluded to before, I think if the time comes and we've got to sell the Charles, and I think you're looking at under a million plus. 
I think he'll be our yeah. first hundred million plus player. That, that, obviously, that won't be the case with Alan if he has a good two or three years because he'll be 31, 32 by that point. But at the end of the day, he could address a major issue in this side, couldn't he? In the short term, yeah. You know, you bring you bring Alan in, you get let's say let's say what is he twenty nine? So you get you get three you get three good years out of him. Within them three years, you bring in a younger player to to shadow him as a you know toward, towards the end of those three years. And then you utilize them. Then you get the you know you you run his contract down if you need to. You extend it where you, where you need to. You don't. He doesn't have to have sell on value if he's done his job at the end of the day at that age. And and, and le- it, it's the leadership is under status because we haven't got leadership in this team at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you know, I I I, I saw on Twitter someone alluded to the fact that they'd make him captain straight away. And you know what? If he's got that impact and he's got that experience and he and why he, the hell he, not? He can lead, why not? Well, can't why do not? any worse than some I'm of the si- people who I'm sick- disgrace the club at the by like wearing the armband. You know, I'm sick of I'm sick of Gilfy Sigurdsson having the armband. I'm sick of to be honest with you, I'm sick of Seamus Coleman having the armband. I'm sick of having I'm, players. I'm I'm, I'm with you on that, Rob, to be honest. I'm sick of having players who who after the defeat come out with this rallying cry. And d- d- it's reactionary rather than you know, rather than going out. Yeah, why don't why don't why don't you give this rallying cry at half time when we're getting yeah, beaten? Maybe we get getting, a response to the second half. Yeah, I'm sick of having captains who are cowards, basically, and and at the, uh, we, we toss it around too much as well. For me, I mean, he obviously had no intentions of staying, and 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 that's fair play. But you know, Leighton Baines for me was the was 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 my choice of captain coming into this year. Um, or he'd be club captain certainly anyway obviously not team captain because he wouldn't have played that much but I'm sick of having captains who are cowards and you know what Seamus Coleman I'm sure he's a lovely fella Phil Jagielka I'm sure he was a lovely fella Phil Neville I'm sure he was a lovely fella I'm sure Gilfie's alright as well to talk to but he's not a captain he's not someone who grabs that team by the scruff of the neck and goes and wins your games I'd, 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 I'd happily have Richarlison or Holgate as captain I mean I think... what, they'll, get, they'll, get in fa- they'll get in players' faces I think Terry, you, this is your turn to say your PC because I know you're very much of the assumption that the captain's role is a more of an administrative role than on the pitch, aren't you? No, it's not more than that. I just always um, it's obviously the the first and foremost that's on the pitch. But for me, I think the the idea of you know give him a, the captaincy, you know. Because he, he like Holgate, give him the captaincy. It's like, yeah, but he might not want to do all the stuff that comes with it off the pitch. Like, like you know, you got to hand the fines out for players who are late and stuff like that. It's it's a lot more to it than that. I think you can still have leaders on the pitch who haven't got the armbands. The, the one thing I will one hundred percent you know agree with though is I never want to see Gilfie Sigurdsson ever again. A player who hides on the pitch and shits out the tackles. You know what? You got you know a lot of clubs have got players like that. They're not all got the armbands on, so I, I don't want to see Sigurdsson again. But I, if if Alan was to come in and you know ever captain the team in his first season, much like you know Roy Keane said it when he when he saw Harry Maguire at the captain's armband this season, you know when he'd only just arrived, said I think that says a lot for the players who were already at the club. So if Alan comes and he puts the armbands on at any point, it will speak volumes about the rest of the lads there. So it'll it'll be something to keep an eye on if he does come in. We'll see G- Gilfy Sigurd some points and I'll just point at him and point off the pitch. That'd be nice. <laughs> just growl at him. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. Wait, what's Portuguese for have some respect? <laughs> As I was saying before. Uh, so yeah, leave it at that anyway. Let us know your opinions, guys, on Alan. Whether you want us to bring him in, whether you want someone else. Let us know who you want. If you don't want Alan, drop us a comment and let us know all that stuff. Give this video a like and subscribe for more content. And until next time, thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues.